So I, I hear how this your some of your economic plans will benefit um, the middle class, obviously some entrepreneurs, some startups, um, people who probably have decent enough credit scores to get loans. But let's go to that 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 neighborhood that is completely eviscerated. They don't have any plans, any any businesses. They don't have any credit. They don't have anything. All they have is a rap sheet. How would those benefits go all the way down there? <clears throat> no, I, I, absolutely. That's a great question. It's something that I'm, I'm touched directly because I'm on the ground in the community. We're running a grassroots campaign. There's no no Air Force here. We're strictly infantry. Mm-hmm. And we're on the ground every day in the community. In, in, in Samtown, Winchester, where, where we saw it took place last spring around Freddie Gray. That's where I'm at. And having conversations with returning citizens uh, and understanding, too, that we talk about crime in Baltimore City, which is an issue, but what we don't talk about is that it is a symptom of a greater issue of poverty. And mm-hmm. so really addressing that poverty through creating those opportunities. And so, again, I believe, too, that we have an opportunity in Baltimore to create hundreds of thousands of jobs. Baltimore City is a blue-collar town that has been without blue-collar work since Bethlehem Steel left um, 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. And so knowing that, I believe we can. We need to create a new industry in Baltimore City, and I believe that that industry is clean energy manufacturing and production. Okay. We know that in California, who's feeling the direct effects of climate change, um, that they have created 300,000 jobs moving towards clean energy, moving towards sustainable living. We can do the exact same thing and have the space, the warehouses for production and light manufacturing, and we have the bodies to put to work, the labor force, to do the work if we're proactive and take the steps. We also know that the federal government is about to spend more on clean energy uh, in the next four years than they spent in the last 40. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so knowing that if we're proactive and we take those steps, we can begin to train and prepare workforce uh, for that work and for those opportunities, work that you don't need a college degree for, work that you go through uh, trades or, or a career and technical education, as you say, mm-hmm. uh, now, uh, CTE training. And so those are the things that I'm advocating for. And the city has the funding to help support that training. There's a model actually called Summit Academy OIC out of Minneapolis that has had done great work doing this and training people from low-income backgrounds and from communities of color in particular to get them into the trades. We know that the trades have been historically difficult for people of color to break into, and they've done that and have shown a model that's been successful to do that work. And and when you talk to ex-offenders, they just want an opportunity. They want some training. They want to be able to provide for their family. So what we have to do, too, is recognize that in this, 75% of felony crimes are committed by individuals who've had prior interaction with the law. Mm-hmm. So what that means, says to me, is that if we want to have an immediate impact on crime reduction, we have to focus on preventing offenders from reoffending. So as soon as they get out, we have to get them into programs and get them working so that we break the cycle of individuals getting in trouble, going to jail, getting out of jail. Now, because they have a record, they can't get a job, so they right. go back to the streets and then they're going back to the drill, jail. We have to break that cycle by ensuring we're focusing on uh, immediate attention on making sure that they are getting job opportunities, living wage job opportunities. And the clean energy industry will provide it just that. Uh, and so that's really what I'm looking to do. I flew half across the world to Mazdar in the uh, United Arab Emirates, which is the world's first sustainably green city built from the ground up. It's a, an entire city that's uh, powered by solar and wind energy and heated and cooled by geothermal technology. So while advancing technology, uh, also reducing carbon footprint is, is key, and it's something that we here talk about and that we know is necessary. Mm-hmm. And so when we look at what we've seen in the past of creating new economies, what we've done once before by creating the interstate highways, we can do the exact same thing with clean energy and put hundreds of thousands of people to work. I love I love what you said, man. Uh, to to really use the um, use people who are first time offenders or just having an encounter with the police, using um, the system, identify those people, um, have some type of rehabilitation so that you can reduce recidivism. I think that's something that we have just completely thrown away in America. It's just everywhere in America, we are no longer focusing on how we can get those people who have encountered the law and keep them from ever getting back into it.